Welcome to Act with Vicky. Um, we're painting the purple dragon today and I'll guide you through how to do this um, wonderful uh, picture. You'll see it um, on your screen so that you have a constant um, thing to look at while you're doing it. Um, now I've already prepared mine. This is the PDF that you can get online on my um, on my website, Art with Vicky, where the PDFs are. So you can download it. If it's not already in a grid, then just uh, feel free to add a grid in with the um, a pen and ruler. Um, don't need necessarily need a ruler. You can do it quite rough as well. And then with a grid reference, you can put in the grid in here as well on the picture and the transferred. Alternatively, if you're going to be painting it on an A4, you can trace it through, you blacken the rest like I show it on the website, or indeed you can even print it out in 3D, um, sorry, in A3, and uh, then trace it through. So let's get this lovely, lovely picture started. Um, he really is a beautiful, powerful beast, um, lovely to see. Now I've set out so that you can see what I'm doing here from overhead. Um, and then here is my palette, so you will see exactly how um, wet or not so wet the um, the paint is in the end. Now, so what we're going to do, we have, um, I've got uh, several um, uh, paint brushes, several sizes, um, um, large, medium, it's not quite so small and a round brush. I quite like it working with my flat brushes, but of course you can paint whatever brushes you want to paint with or have at your disposal. Hog brushes are a little bit less um, suitable for this, but they will, they are good too. You'll need a palette knife, um, tissue paper and um, a hair dryer. And if you check on YouTube, there is a materials video um, where you can uh, check out what kind of materials that I will be using. So we're going to start this off by wetting the canvas around the dragon's head. Um, I've got a hair in it. Around the dragon's head, all the way around. We're not going actually into the dragon. Remove these paint brushes. We're not going into the dragon as such. We're just going right around. We're using what's called a wet and wet technique to start off with. Um, and basically, I just want to create some texture and I'm going to put purple here because, oh, and then I'm going to, you, you, uh, you'll see in the, um, in the presented image, it's black, but uh, if we put uh, layers of color underneath, then those layers shine through a little bit um, and it makes the uh, colour a lot more interesting. Um, and it's not just um, a, a dead black. Black can be quite dead um, most of the time. It's quite a dull colour. Adds a bit of drama, of course. Um, but now we're going to, as I say, right around the dragon. This is his jaw. That's the flame. And uh, I'm doing my sides as well because when I want to hang it up later on, it looks so much better to have, have gone all around the side. Um, this is just plain water, nothing, no colour in it whatsoever, just this thin film right around the whole dragon's head in between the flame bits and right around. There we go. That's it. And then I'm going to get my purple. Now I have, this is actually a, a violet. I'm going to add that onto my palette. As you can see there, it's not a huge amount. I'm going to get some water, add some pigment and paint in and just let it flow into the water that we've already applied. I may have to get a little bit more paint in a moment. Here we go. All the way around. Just let it in. And it doesn't have to be even by any means. Just get some paint on. Remember, we're going to be covering it again with black. 
happen in a while. Now some pigments like this one, the binder and the pigment is actually separating from each other a little bit as I'm adding water. You'll have that with some paints, but you won't have it with some others. It all depends completely on your the make of your, the brand rather, of the paints that you use. This one is uh, Darla Rowney, a relatively good medium range. There are others, of course. Now, can you see I'm not at all even? It is blotchy, but this is what will make it nice and interesting afterwards when it is finished. There we go. Go around the side, make sure I go around the top a little bit. There we go. Now I like to have some tissue paper to the ready as well. And place it nearby. You can use old serviettes, whichever is your preference. There we go. All the way around, right to the bottom, right around the side. I'm painting on canvas. You can use canvas board, painting board, of course. You can use cardboard, but make sure to prime it beforehand, either with emulsion or gesso. Paper is a little bit more difficult unless you prime it first. Acrylic on paper, if you use it thick, is fine, but if you thin it light down like this, then that's a little bit more difficult. Now I just want to use up the paint I've got. So I actually want to add a little bit more here into the corner because I want to draw the eye up in here a little bit as well later. Quite a lot of dark in that corner. Now, then, get some texture. I will often go back again, even though we won't see most of that because it'll be behind the black. But there you go. It, it adds, creates beautiful textures. Now we're going into drying it. There you go. Here we are. First lock on. Now you can see the texture is much better than when it was wet a minute ago. It's still a bit wet up there. Um, there you go. Different textures. As I say, it'll be, be hidden. I'm going to dry this again. As I say, it's mainly hidden behind the black. Um, but we are creating texture at the moment and because the black won't go on um, completely even either so it comes through and there's a play of colors within it um, that makes the color the black as I say a little bit more exciting. Now I'm going to get a little bit of pre-mixed purple which is lighter but perfectly with that um, a good match and um, this one I'm going to actually apply relatively straight um, out of the pot. What I often do is I'll get a big thick, a big tube of paint and I'll put it into these little pots um, and then they're ready for me to use as I want them now. Just loosely e all the way around. Let some of the others shine through that was there. Um, make sure you don't spread it too evenly so that we have a bit of texture in the paint as you can see. Um, you see that? That will just create a little bit of texture underneath the black lake for later. A little bit of pre-planning going on here. Because the dragon is quite scaly and here and there I want to uh, indicate some scales. So as you can see we've just gone right around and added in the purple. All the way around the whole of the dragon's head and now and then um, we go ahead and we dry it wash out our paintbrush. Now I'm going to add in some black. I've got some good um, Schmincke black. It's lamp black but um, completely depends on what what, what company you've, um, what brand you've bought. Um, and I'm going to actually get this directly out of the tube and I'm going to use my palette knife and I want to put this on relatively not thick 
um, but I'm going to put my palette, my palette knife, um, at an angle, as you can see, nearly right angles, just slightly angle it in, so I can scratch this paint on, or spread it like you would with butter onto your bread if it's not too thick. Um, if you like your butter not too thick, I do, I know, but not the healthiest of options. So I'm going to just turn my canvas around because it makes it so much easier if I put it to how I like it. Now I'm, don't, I'm not worried about going into the edges or over the edges. I'm going ar um, around the outline but I'm not being exact because it's nice. If you look at the original dragon, there's nothing perfect in it. So now nice and in. And again, if you can see, there's nothing. It's not even. I'm letting the colour underneath shine through a little bit. Let it come out. Around the sides as well. Just if you're painting canvas, it makes it so much better to hang it later. And then I'm turning the canvas how I need it all the time, as you can see. There we go. And you can see me how I'm squiggling my palette knife around. It's a bit wet yet underneath, that's okay too. There we go. It's creating texture. If you see, there's nothing, it's not evenly spread. The line, the direction of the palette knife, there's some different directions. And I'm using my palette knife to also edge here and there. Around the edge again. This is the top edge. Make sure I go into the little corner here. There we go. See how I'm angling my palette knife. I've let that lead left this open because that is where the flame is, as you can see, it comes around the corner a little bit. It just makes it late, much late uh, when you're hanging it later. You don't need to run out and get a frame. It looks quite nice. There we go. I'm angling all the time to make it fit. So I can apply it evenly. See how I'm going around the eye? See the eye emerge now? There we go. I'm angling my palette knife all the time. It sounds a bit scratchy. But I'm not actually scratching it in. I'm just applying it, as I say, as though I'm spreading butter. On a piece of Rivita, maybe. It's okay if the purple looks out a little bit or well, we don't want any white edges because the white edges in the end when the picture is done just really shine out and that we don't want. There we go. All the time I'm being careful where I touch it because I don't want to put my hand into the black paint. So it does wash off easy. There we go. And where I've got a little blob like that, I'm going to use a bit of a, use my palette knife and apply it in like that. Go around the corner a little bit. There we go. go around his little snout part. There we go. Right around. Make sure I cover my sides. I 
See how thin that is. I want to be a little bit careful that I don't exactly scratch off the paint underneath. I just want to apply a thin film of the black. There we go. That's looking good. And I'm running out of um, where I can hold him. There we go. And here a little bit. And here a little bit. Right around. And this is okay, this little bit of purple looking out here and there underneath the paint. That's absolutely lovely. And see how I'm going very fully into my corners. There we go. that little corner down here often a little bit of white in there so I want to show that off when it's hanging up and here we go and around and there we go and he's done with black we're going to dry it now with the hair dryer we're going to repeat the same procedure now that he's nice and dry, I'll just wait for the canvas to cool down a moment. Um, yep, I can feel that cooling down because I'm going to apply some wet, again, water. And um, same procedure as at the very beginning. That's it. And if it's um, too hot, then it's just going to evaporate the water far too quickly. So now it's okay. I can use this water still. Um, even though it's not clean water, but as I'm going over the dragon's head with purple in a moment, that's absolutely fine. Now I'm not going to go into the eyes. I'm going to leave the eyes blank for the moment because we're going to put some fire in the eyes later. Um, I'm not going to do his little wing on his head nor his horn. And I'm not going to do the eye on the side. You can see how wet that is getting. There we go. All the way around. And I'm not going to do the inside of his mouth because there's fire going in there as well. And I'm not going into the flame. So I'm going right around the flame. I'm using my bigger brush. You can, of course, use a narrower brush if you like. There we go. It's perfectly ample. A little bit more fiddly. Obviously, the bigger brush covers more. You've got round brushes, then you do it with your brown brush, that's fine. There we go, right in. That's the reason we need to dry. I needed to dry the paint on the outside because we don't want to put in, pick, pick up any of the black. Um, because that would then ruin our purple paint that we're putting in. So here we go. All the way around. In here as well, in between the flames. Tiny bit in there, his jaw, and again I'm not going in here because that's part of the inside of his mouth. He's breathing fire, smoke, there we go. So now that's his snout done all the way around. That's it, lovely. Now I'm going to get my purple paint again. Exactly the same procedure as we did at the very beginning. And just add it in and this why it didn't it didn't matter so much we did do our contours at the very beginning there we go all the way around just 
through his eyelids, because that's what that is here. Top and bottom. There we go. I'm using my direction of the brush more or less to go with the dragon's head, but at the end of the day, it's going to be covered again with paint, so you don't have to be too precise here at all. It's fine. See about the flame. Go in here. Try not to leave any white behind. Do cover your areas. There we go. You can see the pencil drawing. I didn't rub it out. There was no need for it because most of it you won't see once the dragon is done. And here a little bit underneath this part of the flame. There we go. And again, I'm not completely precise. Around his nostril. More paint, I think. There we go, go right around. And the nostril is up here, that's the hole. There we go. The bottom part of the jaw. You see how relatively thick I'm applying the paint here. So it won't go on too thick because it's wet and wet. There we go. Now I'm going to get some more paint and I'm going to put it up here as much as it will allow me because it's peeling it off a little bit because there's quite a lot of water in there. Just a little bit of pre-shaping because the head goes around. There we go. Bottom of the lid. Right around and I put all that on. There we go. Put my paintbrush away and then I'm going to come at it with a, a bit of tissue paper and I'm going to dab it off again in areas especially up here where it's going to be highlighted. There we go. I'm going to leave most of that there. Go right around here a little bit. Pick that out a little bit. Again, it just adds texture. Again, a lot of that you won't see later. That's this jaw part. And if you get a little bit in here, that's not too bad. That's okay too. There we go, there's another section done. And he looks quite nice, we're going to dry it and then it is. I'm going to go in here with a slightly smaller brush. It makes it that little bit less, less fiddly than with the bigger brush in this instance. And there's the rest of my paint, just deposited somewhere. Make sure I do my contours here, that's perfectly good, okay. Going to go into drying mode again <laughs> and we dry away. Now he's dry again. I'm going to go and do the flames now and get started on those. That's lovely. We'll add some lighter purple a little bit later, but for now we're going to concentrate on the flame. So I'm now going to get some lemon yellow. In this case, it's a little bit warmer than lemon. But I can get my lemon yellow as well. And what I will also want is some lovely orange. Well, this is vermilion red. That comes later. For now, I just want some orange red because we're going to be blending some colors together. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use a smaller brush this time. Check my brushes, they're more or less the same size, these two. Um, I shall go with this one. 
And again, I shall add just some water to start off with. And I've changed over to my clean water because purple and yellow are opposite colors. And if I start adding this dirty water into my yellow, it'll muck up my yellow and I don't want to do that. And this is why I always like to have two jars of water at my disposal and ready to just swap over. So now there's a lot of yellow going here. I can actually use my bigger brush. There we go. Gets me done faster. And I've managed to get a little bit purple in there. That's not too bad. Okay. I'm going to go onto the edge of the eyes. I'm not actually going into the pupil or the iris. So I'm just going to do this little triangle here. And then I'm going to do this flame here as well. A bit of yellow in, uh, a bit of just water in there. Nothing else around my edges. So there we go. Make sure I've covered it all. That's it. Lovely. Go around the corner a little bit. Okay, just a thin film of um, water. Now I'm going to get my lemon yellow and I'm going to mix quite a bit of water into that. This one is actually quite grainy. There we go. And I just want to smooth it out a little bit. Here we go. Now I'm going to add that in to the eye up here. See how that makes it pop? Because as I say, on the colour wheel, purple and yellow are quite opposite from each other. The complementary colours. And I love painting with complementary colours because I love when it goes pop. There we go. Into the mouth. All the way around. Now we mustn't let this dry out because we want to blend in some orange in a minute. So let's just put it in. Change over to your bigger brush if you must, if you want to. I'm quite tempted. It looks like I didn't quite get enough. I'll take some of my premix and add that in there. There we go. So much better to premix stuff. Round around. Add it in everywhere. That's my flame. That's my mouth. The inside at any rate. I want to keep it wet. Acrylic does dry fairly rapidly. I need to be a little bit aware of my time on this. There we go. All the way around. I don't want to leave any of the white. And I'm going to go to this flame. Reclaim a little bit of it here. There we go. All the way around. You see how that yellow and that purple are quite strong against each other. They're fighting for attention. And that's what complementary colours do to make your eyes zing. Okay, so don't have to worry too much about washing out your brush. Now we're going to blend this around the edges of the flame. There we go. It just bleeds into the yellow a little bit. I can grab some more yellow. There we go. Pick some of that orange up and bring it into the centre. Now I want a lot of my centre. I want to leave it yellow. We're going to be edging more with a little bit later with some more red. So we need to leave room so that the orange comes through as well as the red later. Right down. So we're edging it and blending it at the same time. I'm just doing the flames. I'm not looking at the mouth at the moment at all. Just doing the flame. There we go. Now I can clean my brush. Grab some yellow. 
and start blending that all together a little bit. There we go. It's getting quite orangey, so I just have my serviette. Keep rubbing off the. Uh, I think I need to change over to my bigger brush here. And because this is already has got no paint on it, the ideal now for blending as well. There we go. And if it's still a bit orange, we can add more yellow later, that's no problem. Here I want to look a, ye a yellow, more yellow than orange. Over the oranges, oranges on the edges. Now by no means is this the finished thing, because we will go back in over that again. And before this flame dries too much, let's put some orange in. Again around the edge. See how I'm flicking my brush around? That's it. And then right around. Right around. But I want to leave some of the yellow here. I've changed it a little bit to my warmer yellow. I put it out. Lemon yellow is perfectly lovely here. There we go. Blend it all together. It's going to be a little bit orangey on me, but I can reclaim that later. So now. Okay. So now I've picked a bit of orange here and I'm going to put that in there into the mouth area. Just check your original. He's much redder. We will go down the red again. Just for the moment we're just building it up in layers. Bit by bit. There we go. I'm going to edge some of that tongue here. Or flame rather. It's not the tongue here. Right down with the brush, dab, dab, dab. Bring that around a bit. Wipe it off a little bit. Blend it back in again. There we go. Blend that back out. Don't leave any of the edge here. I think I could do with a little bit more orange over here. There we go. Blend that in again. I'm not right happy, I think like it's just a little bit more orangey. Let's check on the original. Maybe a lot more orange than that. But we need to let it dry, I think, as well. There we go. Okay. I don't want to bring too much orange in here because that's coming out from his nostril and I want the yellow to be stronger so I'm just going to wash out my brush grab some more yellow and put that in here there we go just to keep it blended and it takes a bit of work to do that over and over. There we go. In there. Now I'm where I'm picking some orange up again on the brush, that's okay. It's also drying, which is lovely. There we go, now it's getting blended. Blending in nicely. That purple blodge is gone. I'm going to pick up tiny, 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 tiny little bit of orange. Just to do my tongue part, and it's quite dark here. I'll bring it around, pick up some of that yellow that's still a bit wet in there. If it's not wet, grab a bit more from your palette and just bring it in right around. There we go. Right around. All right. Could do with a little bit being darker. I'm checking the original, just a little bit darker here. And there, there's going to be some red in there yet. There we go. That makes it. Makes the flame come out and the mouth drop back. And my 
do the same here. For now, if it's the same values as is in the flame, it doesn't matter because we'll drop a little bit of gray on that later. So it sits in behind as well. Here we go. Also, we don't want it too dark in the back because it'll pop forward. So, gently does it. Okay. I think that's more or less enough for the time being. Just as good. Just add a little bit more here. This needs a little bit more definition here. There we go. I'm going to dry my brush again or take as much paint out as I can. Grab a little bit more yellow and blend it in here a little bit. See how I'm blending? I'm curling the brush. Curling. Because the fire is a bit curly as well, isn't it? And it again, it adds a bit of texture. So I'm not doing it too thick because I don't want to cover what I've done. I just want it to sit in front of what I've done. There we go. That's a little bit in the right direction, that's better. A little bit more, curl it around. I'm not putting any pressure on my brush. I'm just literally just blending it in gently. Just a little bit here as well. There we go. And it already looks a little bit more blended. Now I'm going to pick up my little, my smaller brush again. My eye is nearly dry, but that's okay. I'm going to wet my brush, pick up a small little bit, tiny bit, you see, just very, very thin. Um, lots of water, little amount of paint. Add it into the corners there and round it off a little bit here. And the same here. Just go around. Go into the eyes. And get a bit more yellow. And blend that in there as well. Like that. I'm going to need a little bit more yellow later. Um, because that's quite a warm yellow that I've got. I need some of my lemon yellow. And I'll do the eye over here, give that glow. There we go. And here. And at this point, stop recording for a second. Ah, itchy nose. <laughs> Okay, back on record. Okay, and here we go. Add a bit of yellow, a little bit more yellow. Make that a little bit thicker. Um, I'm going to get a bit more orange, but just a tiny bit because I just want to add a bit here. Mm -hmm. Fire in his eyes. There we go. Just blend it. Lovely. I'm going to add it just a tad bit up here. Oops, that was nearly too much already. I'm going to get some yellow and soften that out again a little bit. There we go. We want to have a bit of fire and in there. That's a bit of orange. I'm just picking a bit of my off up with the corner, literally just the corner of my brush. I'm going to just put the corner down. And add that in, but I need some yellow to blend it together. There we go. Okay, I've done the yellow, so I'm going to go back and get a little bit of my purple, put a bit out on my board palette, and I'm going to have my brush washed. And with the uh, tissue, just as much water taken out as is possible. And I'm going to dip my brush 
in but keep it really 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 sharp at the top there we go so you can see it it's really sharp at the top yeah you see that really sharp and I'm going to start edging so I'll put in here you might need a bit more paint than that put in here because he's got that ridge on his forehead I just want to mark that where the pencil lines were if you can't see them just follow your drawing a little bit back down here again it doesn't matter it's kind of a bit splodgy here that's absolutely fine it's no worries if your paint is a bit thicker than that do add a bit of water blend it in a little bit now I want to edge his little wing it comes out of his head up there by his ear there we go I know he's going into the black so that's not so important but here but there was a bit of white coming through I'm depressing my brush slightly to an angle to the side. There we go. Makes nice neat lines. Not that they have to be precise by any means. That's his horn. There we go. That's his horn. And I want to edge his forehead. I'm looking at the original, yes, so I'm going to edge his forehead Go right around. Yep. Bring it up here. No harm to go up here, just there's a bit of white up there. I'm going to be splattering later, so you won't see much of that. Pinch this off a little bit. That's grand. And there we go. Just a few lines here and there. So there's nothing precise about this dragon. Now we are going to do around his eye, which we'll do later in black as well. Being careful not to pick up any of the yellow so much. Should be nearly dry enough. Just edge the eye. I'm pressing my brush down. I'm going slightly to the side with it to get those edges in. And here, on the other side, just go around a little bit. There we go, that's the eyelid. Just to differentiate the eyelid from the, from the white of the eye on his case, the, the fire in his eyes. I got a little bit too much orange up there because I want to reclaim some of the lid. There we go. And uh, I'm going to go and do here where the nostril at the back is as well. There we go. And then I'm going to go right around his mouth area. And same thing. If you've got a round brush, you'll be doing it with the tip of the brush. There we go. I'm not going to do it around the flames. There we go. It's a little bit thick in places, that's okay. We're going over the, the dragon head in a moment as well. Now, if the brush proves to be too big, then we'll swap down to a smaller brush, which I'm going to do. I'm going to put my purple brush in the purple water. There we go. Just the edge the mouth there, that's where his teeth would be. And this goes around here, there we go. There we go. Bring it right around. Swing it right around again, there we go. Right round, and that brings us over to the edge of his mouth. And just sort of like a lizard, it's a bit sharp, beakish. There we go. 
Now this is his nostril, which we're going to go into with black. So I'm just going to cover that little white area that I had there. That would be a little bit untidy later. And here as well, even though we're going to go over that in a minute, just close this off, bring it together a little bit. And here, a little bit of a white area I don't really want. So I'm just going to close this. And here, close that. And here. And there. There we go. There's a bit of white coming through here. I can close that off as well, even though it goes over the edge. That's fine. So now we've got that covered. Don't you see, that's a bit splodgy. I'm not too keen on this section here. There. So I could take some of that away again. But we'll be covering that in a minute anyway. So it's no, no big deal at all. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to dry that off and then we'll carry on. Now I'm going to add a little bit more yellow again, but in this case lemon yellow. Water it down a little bit so it's not too thick and bring that out from my nostril. There we go. I'm start with a smaller brush, bring that in a little bit. I don't want to go to the edges too much. I'm going to add some water now to the paint that's already on my brush so I can just blend it around. I want more yellow coming out from his nose, like just now. I'm going to bring some more yellow into this as well, but I don't want to obliterate. The orange I've got already. There we go. So now I'm going to go and get some vermilion red, which is a lovely strong red. Not too much. Scarlet red would be lovely too. Don't go for crimson. Crimson is quite dark and nearly browny, browny red. But this is a nice clean red. So right around the corners. Okay, and I'm wetting it, I'm putting quite a lot of water to it because I want to edge here because it makes it more fiery and it also differentiates between the flame and the mouth. Now I'm going to dry it and clean that off. I want to blend that in because I don't want it too hard. There we go. And I can add more red here from the top down. There we go. Oops. I can add some orange as well. Not too much. Just start blending that down into it. But that's maybe too much, so I'm going to put a bit more yellow back in. There we go. And it meets here with this one. And then I'm going to wet my brush again. And I'm going to blend pure red up in here. More, make it nice and pointy. Flames are the legs around. And then I'm going to get a bit more yellow. If I add orange here, then I have too much orange. This yellow already makes it orangey. I want it to blend down into the other yellow that's here. There we go, and let it meet there. There we go. Like so. And I'm going to get more red, and bring it in from the bottom here. Get some of that edge. I'm only going around the edge here. 
There we go. Wipe off my paint, go for the yellow so that I can blend it with the red. Bring it back into orange in some places, but leave it at the red down the bottom. Get more red Get from this area here. And wet it a little bit. It's all the time of um, the play between dry paint and wet paint and blending it together. It takes a little bit to get the, um, the feel for it. There we go. Now I'm going to get my yellow and curl that in here. There we go. Curl it here. Curl it in areas. So again, I've got this curling going on of the, of the flames licking. There we go. And let it in there a little bit, just a tiny little bit here and there. Adding a bit of red onto my brush. I'm just curling it here and there. When it's a bit too red, I'll add a little bit more yellow again. There we go. Yeah. Let's go for that. What was that little bit of a purple patch? And I need to go in here a little bit. It's a little bit too red for my liking. I'll just curl a bit of yellow back in. A little bit here as well. There we go. And here I'm going to add a bit more yellow. I don't want the back flame too much because if I make it to the same intensity as the one on the front, then it brings it forward too much. I do want this one to sit in the background. Yeah. So I don't want it too intense. And I'm just dry brushing it in now, more or less. I just want to define it a little bit here. If it gets too intense, we can drop a bit of grey over it later. So it's no, no, um, no issue if it goes too dark now. Now I'm going to just have wet my brush, not add any more paint to it. I'll just pick up some of the yellow that I've got in there. Curl it around into the background. And just take that intensity out again a little bit. There we go, that's looking better. That's a bit of a hard line there. So I'm just going to add a bit of yellow over it. There we go. And there we go. All right, and I see that could be a little bit yellower here. So I'm going to add a bit more yellow in here. Curl it in. Curl it in. A lot of that will be splattered anyway. And the splatters simulate the smoke. So a little bit here and there. There we are. Now his mouth is quite fiery. More fiery than in the original. That's okay. We'll add some grey later on. Now, so the eye is quite fiery. I think I quite like that. Maybe just a tiny hint of orange. So I'm going to take a lot of water a lot of water, see that, sort of very thin, thin paint, and just and do it slightly rounded here because it simulates the eye going around as well, the eye is an eyeball. That's okay over there, just a bit more here again, a bit more yellow. Hard line in there. Hard line. Mask that over my paint. Lovely. That'll do. Looking at the original, that's quite good. Okay. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to get a little nodule of black. Tiny little nodule of black, just put it down. And then I'm going to wet my eye. Of course I've put an iris in there, there's no need for that at all. There we go. I'm going to do the nostril as well. Just add a bit of water first and then I'm going to pick up my, my black. I'm going to add that in. Look how that just goes ping. There we go. Just get that in. Just get that in. I'm concentrating on having more of the actual colour up here and it in as it goes down. Because what it does, it simulates the fact that it's a hole and as it goes up, it goes deeper. That's looking good already. Okay, I'm going to try it now. So now I'm going to get a bit of ultramarine uh, um, blue or dark blue. Uh, it's a bit of a trick to the eye. I'm going to add in a bit of a tiny into blue. So I'm going to wet that with quite a bit of water. It's just a film of blue over the eye, very, very thinly. We're going to add more black again, just very, very thinly. Put that all over the eye. I'm going to add a bit into the nostril as well because blue makes things go into the background. There we go. And while we have it, we take some of that blue and just add a bit of it over into the mouth area because what it does, it knocks the mouth area back a little bit. Just very, very, very thinly. Very thin layer. Because what disappears into the distance goes greyer and greyer. And when I add a little bit of blue here, it just makes it a bit greyer, makes it go a bit more shadowy. There we go. I'm not going to do the whole of the mouth down here, just a little bit. And in fact, just a little bit more here, just to define the mouth away from the flame a little bit and go into a Do it in a curve a little bit, so it makes it roundier. Now, I'll just add a bit of colour on my tissue, clearly, I'm going to change my tissue. And there we go. Repeat that. There we go. You see that? It's just a little bit greyer. And I'm going to come down here at the top a little bit into the mouth like a shadow. There we go, and it just echoes the shape. Of the top of the mouth a little bit. There we go. And that could be quite rounded here. It makes it sink back into the background. Just like that. That'll do lovely. And you see how much the eye is looking already a deeper, it's deeper. Because after all, the eye is a hole in the pupil. Add a bit more again, although we are going to be adding black again. There we go. There as well. And whilst we're at it, we do need to do this side over here as well. So we leave a bit of a highlight. Going right around. 
We'll take that eye out a little bit later again. Give it a little white. There we go. And I'm going to add some blue while I have them here now. And you see how already that makes it just stand out. Can you see that? See the blue in the eye? But as I say, we'll be hiding that again, not fully, but with some black. So I'm going to dry it again and then we carry on. Now I'm going to grab some more of that black, quite intense this time, quite without much water in it. I'm going to add that in up here to the top of the iris and go around like that, but I'm not going to go all the way down. There we go. And then I'm going to give this iris, that iris pupil rather, a little bit of black as well. And I'm going to go right in here into his nostril, add a circle. Tidy that up a little bit and then let it feed out here. And that looks like it's gone right up into his nose. Now, while we have that black, I'm going to pick up some of it, add quite a bit of water to it, and I'm just going to fill that in a small little bit here, because that will make that go backwards later. And I'm going to add in my shadow for the horn. So I'm going to add a little bit more black again into it, and I'm going to shape the horn like that, like that, and I'm going to take my tissue and soften that out a small little bit, that's it. Take my brush and just soften all that out. We're going to add some cream colour in that a little bit later. So we're going to dry it off again now. Okay, now we're going back into the head. That's quite dark. That's quite okay. We shall have a look at that again a little bit later. We're now going to start forming the head. Um, I quite like it as it looks, but I want to add a little bit more. There we go. Just a little bit more color to it, as in to shape that around a little bit more. So I'm going to get my pre-mixed white and purple together and then I'm going to get my palette knife so we're going to pick up some of this and we're going to simulate back to simulating the um, the scales and I'm going to skim the color this lighter purple over this darker purple but I want to leave some of that purple darker purple out I don't want to cover it completely I just want to simulate scales also I'm going to go with the shape of the head so sometimes it's going to be like that my strokes and sometimes they're going to be going down the head or even with the snout of the mouth like that just to curve just constantly to to echo the shape there we go and here we've got the eyebrow ridge so I'm not going to go into that for the minute and here we've got that other ridge going on that sort of makes him look like he's got horns we're going to darken that up later again for the moment we want the texture to make it look like he's got scales and that will come through later once it's dry so don't put it on too thin I'm going relatively thick. There we go. Lifting up the palette knife here and there. As I say, to simulate as though he's got scales there, which of course the dragon has scales all over. There we go. And I'm going with the shape here, coming down. There we go. And I mustn't forget to go around my sides. And I want to pick up my eye here a little bit, but I also want to let that, what's going on underneath, some of that colour out. There we go. 
you can see it's around the corner because it does make a difference when you look at it around the corner and it's hanging on the wall and depending on what angle you're looking at it from if you've got your corners done it just reads into the rest of the picture there we go and that's his jaw where he's got scales going on as well I'm not going into the flames. If I do end up going a little bit into the flame, it doesn't matter. Pick up a brush. Wet it. And wash it out. There we go. And here we go. I'm going to do that with the tip of my brush or my palette knife. That's not too bad. Okay, now here. I'm going to make the scales bigger. I'm going down that ridge as though the ridge was continuing from there. There we go. And I'm going to go around. There we go. And this is over the bridge of his nose. There we go. That's where the nose lifts off like ours. And there. Yeah. I'm not sure if a dragon has scales on the front of his mouth, but there we go. And down here, I'm simulating that it goes around. Put it in there. There we go. That's a bit too roundy roundy for my liking here. That's better. Now, I'm just going to dab here and there, much smaller here because it goes around the corner. Don't go into the eye too much. That's the scales going in a different direction over here. So I'm going to just curl this a little bit. That's it. Lovely. And then I've got the top of his eyebrow. And there we go. Eyelid rather. And what you see, we've created some scales, and when that's dry, that will echo because we're going to do another layer over some of the most of that, and then you'll see what I mean. Okay, this little lid here goes off around the distance, and here as well. That's better. Yeah. Now we're going to dry that and once we're dry then we're going to put on the next layer. We're going to add some more black. Um, I'm going to get my... There we go. And I'm going to add another, another little nodule. We don't need an awful lot. Just We're going to shape the head now. Put some shadows in that it starts getting round but we don't want to do too much of it and often people will mix up white with black for grey but we don't need to do that all we need is a little bit of black a lot of water a thick brush and we start shaping um, so I'm looking at the original and we're going to shape the head right around like that now make sure that your paint is dry because when it's on, gone on thick, like we just had it, then, like I did, we can run into trouble when it's not dry enough. And you blend that out a little bit. And dry it again. So, back to our forming, shaping the head. I'm going to add shadows in. That's better. Right around. I'm going to go into the eyelid a little bit. Around here a little bit. There we go. I'm 
under the jaw. You see how it's picking out the texture? Not too dark up here. There we go, here as well. Round that a little bit. There we go. See how that sh immediately shapes the head? And then under the eye. Around the nostril a little bit. And the fire, we want to define the fire. So we can go right along the edge here. Bring that around. Shape it here as well. Shape his mouth going around. And under the nostril here, and just shape a little bit here. Don't make too much of that. Just a little bit wet. Now I want to drop this side a little bit into the shape, so I'm going to add a little bit of black over that. It's still a bit wet. There we go. It also brings the eye out. And it defines that bridge a little bit as well. Finish it off around here. There we go. Now I want to bring some of that purple back in to his little head wings up there. And I didn't wash my brush out deliberately. So I could still have some of that grey. But I'll now drop in a bit more of the colour. Blend it in a little bit. We just want that to be a little bit murky because the eye will just sort of brush past it later. It'll be there, but it won't be in the foreground. There we go. And we'll put a little bit more purple on that later when it's dry. Or now it looks a bit shadowy. Put a little teeth on later onto the, this section. We we'll need to go in there. There we go. All the time looking at my original to see how it looks. Make sure we're going in the right area, going in the right direction. And we could do a little bit of shadowing just down here, just to bring that around. In his mouth, just a hint, nothing more. Just a little bit here, go a little bit of curve, nothing major. There we go. Round a little bit here, rounded. That's it. And just reshape my head a little bit. That's better. And just here, under the chin. That's it. So it doesn't have to be precise at all. Just a little bit of tidier. That's it. So we're going to dry that again. Now we've created a little bit of shadow here and there. We're going to add a very thin film of purple now. You can see that. Just a little nodule. We're going to add quite a bit of water. We still want this purple. But for now, just a thin film. Don't mix it all with water just yet. What we want to do now is we want to pick out, you see that? We just want to pick out the texture that we created earlier. Yeah? So go all over, over the dragon with the thin paint. I've still got a few wet areas, so that's okay. I don't want to pick up too much on them. But you can see how that... ...texture now is being picked out by this. And here, look at that. You should see it makes it scaly. Maybe it's harder to see at the moment when it's still wet. When it's dry... Just define that a little bit here as well. 
when that's dry you will definitely see what I mean and you'll see it on your own as you're doing it a bit more water right around the eye again there we go quite watery as I say Just to pick out that lovely texture that we created already. And get that scale, get those scales out. You can actually go over the nostril, it'll blend it into place. Not blend it, but harmonize it with the rest as long as you don't do it too thick. But then we are working with thin paint. There we go, right along. If we use paint that's too thick here, then we would pick out the um, the texture. See, the light is shining a little bit into it at the moment. But once it's dry, you see what I mean. A little bit of purple here. Just a little bit. Do you see the difference? We didn't make any texture in this. So that reads quite differently. So now what we've left of the purple, to shape his head, we're going to add that in over and you see more texture coming out again and we're going to need some more purple than that. Right. So here is the dark area, this is where it goes into the, around the corner, a little bit under his eye. In there, it's just shaping the head up here, go around. Now my palette knife is creating a few lines within it and that's absolutely fine. I don't want it to be too even. I don't want those lines to be too even either. Now I'm going to come up from the mouth here. I'm going to need a bit more purple. Look at what's left here. Uh, bring it around, bring it around. And we're definitely going to need some down here. Not too much. There we go. Bring it right around again. Leave it down here. We'll go all the way to the end. Watch your flame here. We need a little bit in here just to echo this happening. Going into this here. There we go. Watch out you don't get it into your flame. I'm going to go a little bit, tiny little bit under his nostril, not too much. Not too much at all. Watch his mouth, just to define that. Make it look a bit scaly. There we go. And now before it gets too dry, sharp here. I also want to go into his eye just a tiny, not the way around, just a tiny bit more. Just a little bit. There we go. And up around his, his eyelid just to define that a little bit. And I'm scratching as well. Now I'm going to take my paintbrush, dry it off quite well. Squeezing quite hard. And I'm going to curl it in my hand a little bit just to open it out a little bit. And I'm going to curl this in. It's nearly dry. But just curl it into the head a bit. And here. I'm going to pick up some more paint here because that's not too, too dry yet. Not much. Just a little bit. Bring it around here. Up here. 
pick some of that paint up, just drop it in here, and that's in. In there. Finish that off here. Just just smooth it out a little bit without smoothing it too much. And say I need to drop a little shadow here and there. That's it. Go a little bit here. Pick that out. It's not too dry. I'm going to add a little bit more over here. Just a little bit because we didn't pick up much of that texture over here yet. Smooth that out a little bit. That's brown. Okay, now we're nearly winning. I'm going to dry this again for a moment. I'm going to mix a little bit of Naples Yellow. Um, quite simply because as I said before yellow and um, purple are on the opposite side of the um, the spectrum um, and I just want to knock it as I say back in a little bit so I'm going to add some white and yellow I wanted more Naples yellow, so I'm going to put a tiny bit of ochre into that just to soften it out and not make it quite so stark, really. That's a bit more like it. And it's quite a lot of paint. Scratch it off my paintbrush. Put my paintbrush away. Actually, put my palette knife away rather. Now I'm just quite watery. In fact, I'm going to go with a bigger brush, relatively watery, and I'm just going to drop a bit of that on here and there, and it'll knock it right down, but also bring the head forward a little bit. So I'm going to go around the eye light, simulate the cheek. Make sure it's not too um, solid with colour. And just here and there, just bring it back. And I'm also going to do the horn while I'm at it. You see the way we've already got the shadow in underneath? And that sort of brings the picture back together again. I'm going to go over the ridge here. That needs a bit of accentuating. And I'm going to go to the top of his jaw. And see how I'm holding the brush as well, going sideways and then bringing it out into a, a curve. I'm going to go right around here. And because we've connected, um, created this texture earlier, that works beautifully. I'm going to go around the edge here just a tiny bit, not much, but just to simulate the head going around. And then we've got his eyebrow here. There we go, and that totally shapes the mouth, uh, shapes the head, much better. Now we could, in order to make more scales, we could let this dance a little bit because that's quite strong. I'm doing some curling the brush in and around. It's a little bit different to the original, and it might be a little bit too much, so we're going to knock that back again in a moment. But it does simulate the scales. And brings it up the whole lot forward a little bit. There we go, just a little bit. Now I'm going to wet my tissue in the water and I'm going to dab it with the wet tissue. Dab the paint into the purple. The purple of course is dry but it makes it less strong but at the same token brings the purple out without it being too flat. I want it to shape the head. There we go. So that head has come on quite nicely. What I'm not too keen on yet is my jawline. I'm going to get a little bit more black. I'm afraid the jawline is a bit too thick. It's a bit too neon this one for me. 
I want to add just a little bit of elegance. So actually what I'm going to do is if you um, watch me here, I'm going to put a curve in like that rather than the other way around. Can you see that? Add the curve in going up into the head. That's better. That reads like a much nicer jaw. But it needs to follow that line here. So that needs to come up here. So what we need to do is do it like that. And we'll put, push that purple away all together. And that's how you can rescue a picture when it goes slightly wrong. Let's simulate and have a quick peek as to what. So we've got nice shapes going on. What we can do. And then I'm also going around the corner here as always. Making sure that that reads all right. And I do think that is a bit better. In fact, just a little bit more here under the flame. Define the flame a bit as well. That's better. Yes, that is a much better dragon. That, that line and that line don't quite read right yet. So that goes around here. So that needs to go around here. Never be afraid with acrylic paint. If you need to correct something, do it. Here, that flame. There's a bit of an untidy piece here as well. So we'll just finish that off. Put a bit more black. You can see it there, and that's a little bit too much. It's purple, not white, but still. Black. Okay, that is better. Now, what I also want to do is correct the highlight of my eye a little bit. I can do that now. I'm going to do that with my roundy brush. Add that in. Just tidy that up. And now I'm going to set at a shadow. So again, I need quite a bit of water. A little bit of paint. And what I'm going to do, the our lid drops a shadow over our eyeball. So that's what I'm going to do here. That's quite wet, of course. That's what I'm going to do here. There we go, and bring that right into the eye and here. Yeah, there we go. And I want to edge his eyebrow a little bit anyway to find his eyes. There we go, make that stronger. Quite human like, really. That's better. That defines the eye nicely. And then over here, just tidy that up a little bit if necessary, which was my case. And now there's another little thing we need to do. We need to take a tiny bit of white and again, water it very well, water it down very, very well and add a reflection here. Just a tiny, 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 tiny bit of a reflection and underneath here as well, because the eye, sorry, the light drops in here. There we go. That's too strong. So knock it back again. And I got my angle a little bit wrong, actually. So we'll just do that again. Blend that back into the eye. Get my white again. And just go with the curve. That's it. It's just it's a little in, nothing major, nothing wrong. Tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. And because I've got the raw canvas coming through on the, on the uh, highlight of the eye, which is okay, but if I find that a bit stark, I'm just going to add a little bit. It's not quite white, but yeah. And while I've got it in my hand, use that brush and just add in the highlight here, a little bit into the horn. Now the other thing I really like to do is I find the flame a little bit too too yellowy really. So just a tiny bit of white again. Mix it up quite a lot with water and curl it in. But don't let it take over completely. Be careful. That's why I need it to be quite wet. But it does, especially the, the flame, ooh, 
to the foreground has picked up a little bit of that black. Again, I can just wet it and immediately rub it out. And here we go. That's gone. And I'll go back, go back to my um my white. There we go. Rub that back in again, that's too wet. Just a little bit, be careful not to pick up any black this time. Just curl it around. There we go. That's it. Yep, there we go. I'll just feed it into the nose. So, but it definitely brings that flame forward a little bit. And I could do with a little bit of white up here. Just bring the eye out a little bit under the eye. Not all of the eye underneath. Bring it out a little bit. Just a little bit up here. That's it really. That's quite a lot of what we're looking through here. Doesn't need to be that much. The flame at the back, going by the original, could have a little bit more white coming out. Just here. Makes it look smoky as well. So I've mixed up some white lots of water. I'm going to just drop a bit of white in here. A it knocks it down back a bit. It's not quite so strong in colour. There we go. And then I can do a little bit of that here as well. A little bit into the mouth, not, nothing too much. Tiny bit around the eye here. Just that white, white in the flame. Makes it a little, little more fiery, I suppose. Okay, here, it's a little bit too filmy. Leave some of the white in, that's no problem. Just edge it around. Okay, that's a good, a good, um, good eye. I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more blue again because I knocked it back a bit, and I want a little bit of that blue shining through and coming through again. It's just, it does simulate an eye, but the colours within the eye, not too much. Okay, that's lovely. And now we're going to go do splatters. That's going to be fun. Um, make sure you, your area is protected because um, they can go everywhere, especially if you've got your computer nearby. Maybe put a bit of a cloth or something on your computer. Um, that's it. And there's a trick to this. Now we're going to add white, red, yellow. That's it basically. So I'm going to start with my yellow splatters. So now I'm going to mix, take some of that yellow, mix it up, sort of milk consistency. And then I'm going to literally just spray it everywhere and it's a this one goes up, this brush goes up, that brush goes down against it, and that's what creates the splatters. And if they're big splatters, 
that's fine in this case it's not a problem at all it simulates the smoke coming out as the dragon is breathing breathing fire drop some up here I'm not going everywhere I'm being quite strategic I'm going to go up here as well not very much I'm going to do a bit more white up there than, than the yellow um, add a little bit here and there but generally speaking keep it to this area try not to get it on my dress now before I go and splatter more colour on this I'm going to dry this because otherwise the splatters run into each other and I don't want to do that so I'm going to add red next so I'm going to dry this off again so I've got my yellow splatters so I'm now going to add some red splatters I don't have an awful lot of that orange left I'll nab some of what is put it out grab some more nice lovely scarlet red mix it up nicely again sort of cream to um, full milk consistency bigger brush for weight one up one down and let them bounce off each other and add in those lovely splatters we're going to do far more white than we do with the red and the yellow but it diffuses all of that nicely it makes them look like a, a busy dragon a bit more water here i think into the paint there we go not too much just a little bit here and there tiny bit up here as well it just tells the story a bit around his eye it's up to you really i'm deviating a little bit from the original that's okay make it your dragon you could even add glitter if you wanted yeah dry just like glitter <laughs> okay i'm going to go dry that again so now we've got so i'm going to get some white Probably don't need quite that much. There we go. Again, add some water. There's more white going on than there is of the other. Now, if you find the droplets of this too big, then drop down to a smaller brush. And it does take a little while to get used to doing the splatters. Now, look at that. Simulates the smoke, finishes this picture lovely. Go, that's it, round to the front, brings the whole thing forward, brings your eye down into that area, which of course is where it's all happening with that smoke and fire. Now I'm going to go up around the flame as well to add some splots up there, because he's steaming, smoking, firing. As I say, hope you're protected. All your computer. There we go. Or mobile or whatever it is. A little bit white up here. No harm if it goes in the eye. Simulates the smoke. Lovely. As I say, you could also pop some glitter on it if you like glitter I think it would work very nicely and it's a project you can do with your kids as well I reckon 11 12 year olds 8 9 10 year olds could actually achieve this quite easily I think that's quite good so thank you for watching and um, be sure to watch out for my other videos art with Vicky there will be some on YouTube there will be some for sale I will be doing I'm also doing online live um, watch out for whichever one tickles your fancy come and join me it'll be awesome also I'd love to see 
um, your result from this dragon. So do pop me an email at artwithvicky at gmail.com. Um, genuinely would love to see it. If you have any questions, do email me. You can also find me on YouTube, Art with Vicky on YouTube, Art with Vicky on Facebook, Art dot with dot Vicky on Instagram. Again, I'd love to see your results. I really would. Um, let me know how you get on and um, see you next time. Bye.